All right, guys, today is the big day, and I'm going to show you what I believe caused a near catastrophic failure in my airplane. This could have been disastrous. This is the thing we've been waiting on. I just received the factory control rod from Sonics. This is what is supposed to be on the airplane. And I want to show you what happens if we compare it to the one that was actually on the airplane. Now, you can see the geometry of these two pieces is quite different. So we're going to see what happens when we put them on the airplane. Another thing that Sonics recently emailed me about was this tailwheel. Um, Kerry said that he looked at the caster. It looked a little long. He didn't think this was the stock tailwheel, so I went ahead and measured it. You know, sure enough, it's a five and a half inch tailwheel, which is not the stock tailwheel. The other thing I noted was that while it's jacked up, there's a little bit more play than I would like in this. It shouldn't have a whole lot of play, and I tried to tighten it up, and you can't tighten it up without affecting the turning ability of it. There's some washers that are in there, um, spacing it to make it actually fit. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much you tighten it, it doesn't really fit that well. You know, the concern with this tailwheel caster having a little bit of play in it is that if this thing shimmies while it's going down the runway, uh, as one of our posters put it, connected to a rigid tailwheel steering rod, it's going to act like a jackhammer on the rudder control horn. So that by itself could easily cause some of this failure that we've seen. As you saw before, I built a brand new rudder. I built this to factory specs. The fit seems to be pretty good. It's now rigged up to the airplane except for the control rod. So if we start with the control rod that the prior builder put on the airplane and we sit it where it wants to go, you can see that the fit is kind of poor. It wants to sit up off the top of the control horn. You can sit it down, but it's at an inappropriate angle there. And the way he had it originally is he actually had a couple of washers under it holding it up. And it's not supposed to be bolted on top of the rudder horn. It's supposed to be underneath. Now we go to the Sonics control rod, and what we find is that, boom, it goes exactly where it's supposed to pretty much right away. This is not going to require any manipulation or changes. This is how it's supposed to look. All right, so now we have the new control rod bolted in place, and with just a light touch, we can move all the way to the stop going in this direction, all the way to the stop going in that direction. And so that does not seem to be putting any undue stress on anything. I'm just moving with light touch. The one thing I really don't like that I'm going to have to fix, the hole that's been drilled through the caster here is bigger than the stock clevis bolt and the hole through the control arm. So as you can imagine, there's forward and back play, and that's unacceptable. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the entire tailwheel caster assembly with the original Sonics ones. Um, that's a little bit smaller. It's a 4-inch, and that's fine. That'll actually improve my angle of attack just a little bit, so I'll be happy with that. But otherwise, I'm really happy with the way everything is moving and how it does not seem to be applying any unusual stresses. I can move it with just very, very light touch. Now, with all that looking good, let's go ahead and do some experimenting. You guys remember the bungee experiment from the last one? Well, we're going to do it differently this time. We're going to use the stock control rod. Now, first of all, I want to show you something. This is the original rudder. We know that that rudder is sitting a little bit high. Um, I also noted that the placement of the bolt right here is a little bit off of spec. It's supposed to be one and three quarter inches. It's one and a quarter inches. But regardless of all that, this control rod fits. So I was sort of expecting that the stock control rod didn't fit very well, and maybe the builder, as a result, used a different control rod. But no, this thing fits. Now, look what happens when I take this and I move it to the stop. Nothing. It's not gapping open. It's sliding a little bit just because it's not bolted in place, but it's not gapping open. It's not doing any of that stuff that the other one was doing. Well, let's go back and look at the other one again. Now we have the previous control rod in place. This was the one that came from the prior builder. It's sitting up on top like we talked about before on a couple of washers because the fit is kind of questionable. One other thing I noted was that the distance from here to here is different than what the plans say. So we're going to take this thing through the range of motion and see what happens. So I'm going to grab the tail wheel, and again, I'm going to very lightly move it to the stop. What we do notice here, I didn't notice this before, but the control rod actually touches the control horn. A little bit of paint missing right there. I don't know how much stress that caused, but that definitely has something to do with it. And then as we go the other way, oh man, look at that. So that's really problematic. This is where we have a really bad day. Well, there we have it, guys. I think we know what happened here. It's pretty clear. So a non-standard control rod was used for a major control surface, and due to the adverse forces, the rudder control horn was peeling away from the rudder slowly, rivet by rivet. Not really that slowly. This happened after not that many hours. 
and it was going to result in a crash. Um, if that thing had come loose, very likely there would have been a crash, serious injury, possibly death. And this is all avoidable by paying attention to the details. Death is in the details. You can't stray from the plans if you don't know what you're doing. So listen, guys, be very careful when you're building airplanes. Be very careful when you're flying airplanes. Always double and triple check everything. And a couple of little things that we're going to do differently here. Um, I am going to go back to the plans on the tailwheel and the caster as well. That caster does need to be replaced. And I'm going to go right back to the factory designed caster and tailwheel. I think that's the best way to go in this case. And if you guys have any questions, leave me a comment below. Please hit subscribe if you like this kind of a video. I'm actually thinking about maybe building a Sonex next because I still am convinced that this is a great airplane. But the implementation of the build is probably what caused this failure. So, guys, have a great day.